a lot of complexity here, right? People are densely embedded. Lots is happening around them at the same time. This is available on, uh, on my website and also on the New England Journal website. You can download this if you want. Um, and it's narrated. OK, now, did anyone see this wave of obesity that I fantasized about? Some did. Who did not? Be honest. Right. Who did? OK, good for you, because I didn't. I was so depressed. Uh, I, you know, we had spat blood to do this project, to get the money from the government to do it. It took years of persuading the study section. Then it took years to collect the data and another year to analyze the data and then make the damn animation work. It was so hard. And I'm sitting there with James Fowler, and I'm, we're looking at this thing, and I'm so excited, and then I'm so depressed. And then it got me to thinking, why? Why did we not see the little pattern that I described? Any ideas? Because obesity is not a unicentric epidemic. It's a multicentric epidemic. The proper analogy is not dropping a single pebble in the pond. It's throwing a whole handful of pebbles in the pond, which creates this choppy surface, which makes it difficult to discern what's going on. But it does not mean that a single pebble doesn't create the ripples. It just means you can't see them. So you have to still use these kind of mathematical tools, these other ways of getting the pattern out of this kind of complexity, which is, in fact, one of the things that we're endeavoring to do. So the next step, having done this kind of broad brush kind of look uh, or portrayal of this network, was to use sort of more conventional statistical techniques. And now I'm just going to use so-called panel regression models, uh, sort of ways of studying uh, repeated measures uh, in individuals across time. And what we did is, is we're going to look at how my weight gain depends upon the weight gain of individuals to whom I'm connected. And we're going to control for the, my prior weight status, my, excuse me, my alter's prior weight status, my alter's current weight status, and my alter's and my education and age and sex and a whole bunch of other stuff. And what we're really interested in right now is the association between my alter's weight gain and my weight gain. We're interested in if my alter gains weight, do I gain weight? Everyone with me? OK. And then we're going to do this in a stratified way, looking at different kinds of relationships. When, when my alter is my sister, when my alter is my brother, when my alter is my friend, when my alter is my neighbor, and so forth and so on. And in addition, we're going to do another very sneaky thing. OK, so if I ask you, if I, ask you uh, if, 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 if I have a friend, there are at least three different kinds of ways I can have a friend. OK? I could nominate you as my friend. That would be an ego-nominated friendship. You could nominate me as your friend. That would be an alter-nominated friendship from the perspective of ego. Or we could nominate each other, okay, which would be a uh, mutual friendship. Now, in which of those three kinds of circumstances would you expect her weight gain to cause my weight gain? Mutual. We're mutual friends. I, I, you know, we're very close. What she does is going to affect me. Next, which would you expect? Ego. I esteem her, right? I nominate her as a friend, uh, uh, as a friend, uh, and and she might. This might be like my high school experience. She had no idea who the hell I am, uh, you know. So she has absolutely. And so an alter-nominated friendship would be uh, would be that uh, the last one because she thinks I'm her friend. I don't know who she is, right? So her actions have no effect on me. Now the reason this is so important, this directionality is critically important for a very subtle econometric reason. It's because we can exploit this directionality to address one of the threats, this issue I mentioned earlier, of confounding. Because if it's like a McDonald's that opened up nearby that's causing both of us to gain weight, it should not depend on the direction of the nomination. Whether I nominate her weight as her, my friend or she nominates me, uh, the, it, it, the, if it were a McDonald's, it, it shouldn't matter. But if it isn't a McDonald's, if it's a real thing going on, the directionality should matter. So we can exploit an understanding of the sociology of the circumstance, of our basic you know, insight into human behavior, to be able to make some causal inferences. And these ideas, this uh, taking advantage of what is known as a directed graph, the fact that the network picture can have arrows, are being exploited in the development of some new statistical methods by some econometricians in Canada and elsewhere. OK, so what we find when you look at this is that if an ego-perceived friend becomes obese, it increases your risk of becoming obese by about 70%. If your mutual friend becomes obese, it uh, almost triples, 171%. It almost triples your risk of becoming obese. And if it's an alter-perceived friendship, it has no effect. 
If I don't know her, she nominates me as her friend. She's gaining weight. It doesn't affect me. I don't know who she is. Okay? We also found that it was gendered. Very interesting to us. Because if it's a social process that's going on, our reasoning was that men, when they are being influenced by weight gain around them, should be paying attention to other men. The women around them gaining weight shouldn't affect them as much as men. So when men are deciding on what kind of body they want, they don't look at the women's bodies. They look at the men's bodies around them. And similarly for women, and what we found was that among same-sex friends there was a relationship, and amongst opposite-sex friends there was not. There was an effect of spouses gaining weight, siblings, we found a similar gradation within the confidence intervals between same-sex and opposite-sex siblings, and we found no effect of immediate neighbors. Now this lack of effect of immediate neighbors is also helpful because it suggests that any confounding that is due to environmental exposures, like a McDonald's or local price of food or whatever, should induce an association between weight gain in your neighbor and you. So failing to find an effect is additional evidence that what's happening here is not some kind of confounding, not something else in the air that's making us both gain weight at the same time. OK. So we also had another finding which got a lot of attention in the media, but we went hunting for it not because, not because we were expecting it to play out the way we did, but rather because we were curious and struggling to get additional ways of bolstering our causal inference. And so what we wanted to do is, and it builds on a sort of neighbor idea, what we wanted to assess was, did it matter how far away the friends were or your social contacts were? So for example, if your sibling was nearby or 100 miles away or 1,000 miles away, did that modify or moderate their impact of their weight gain on you, or if your friend was 110 or 1,000 miles away, did that affect you? And what we found, very interestingly, was that geographic, even though social distance mattered, earlier I showed you that distance within social space is very important. People that are one, two, three degrees away from you, it matters. Geographic distance did not. What these results show is that if you take, for every ego, all the people that are one degree removed from them, and then you partition all the pairs according to their physical distance between the ego and the altar, so these are people that live within the same household, let's say within a mile or next door, within 10 miles, within 100 miles, or within 1,000 miles. So these are people now that on average live 500 miles away from you. What we find is, is that the relative increase in probability of ego obesity given alter obesity is about 40% across the board. It didn't really matter how far away the person was. And I'll come back in a minute to why that is actually quite an interesting insight. So taken together... Um, our, our findings, we think, support a role of induction. I need to say, in other work we're doing, we're affirmatively studying the process of homophily, which is also a sociologically very interesting thing. Right now, in this work, it's a nuisance. We've got to deal with the homophily problem to get to the induction problem. But homophily itself is not a trivial or uninteresting phenomenon. In any case, our findings support a role of induction. Our models control for the baseline attributes of both the ego and the altar, which account for, or help account for the homophily. Omitted variables or confounding, we think, are unlikely to be a big factor, given the directionality of the effects we observe, and given also the fact that neighbors, if they were environmentally based, we would have expected to see an association between neighbors, and also a decay with distance, which we don't see. And I should also mention that we did further analyses looking at smoking, because it's well known at the individual level that uh, if you quit smoking, you gain weight. And so one thing we were curious to know is, is the mechanism by which your weight gain causes my weight gain is that you stop smoking, and then I copy your smoking behavior, and I stop smoking. So you gain weight, and then I gain weight. But what's spreading from you to me is uh, copying or, or smoking behavior. And when we controlled for the smoking behavior in the egos and the alters across time, we found that it didn't change our results. So even accounting for the spread of smoking behavior didn't affect anything that we found. So what might, in fact, be the mechanisms of, of the spread of obesity? Some people have proposed that, in fact, there's truly a biological mechanism, that there are germs that spread from person to person. And there's actually some intriguing support for this claim, both in terms of viruses and bacteria that can spread from person to person. But we're interested not in a biological contagion, but rather in a social contagion. And so there are a couple of ways that this can happen. One way is that the alter's appearance or behavior changes ego's behavior. So you say, let's go and go running. So I go running with you, and we both lose weight. Or you say, let's go have muffins and beer, or fried chicken and beer, to pick a better example. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then I go with you, or I 